Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Artifact 4 Kaiser Kingdom and Baltic Duchy. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So we're building some defenses in our territory to make sure, hey, Russia, don't just immediately murder me, you know? At least run head first into some uh, defensive barriers for at least a little bit. Um, the Reich's Pact is doing pretty, pretty well for itself. It has, you know, Donkey Union, Azerbaijan, and Georgia have joined Armenia. Just not as interested, I guess, in joining our uh, great faction. But maybe at some point they will uh, see the errors in their ways. Because Russia, I, I don't think they're going to invade before the Second Vill Krieg. Um, because you know, usually they, I think they get like an event, or it's a little bit easier for them to do the war. Because right now France isn't doing anything. Um, Italy is going to maybe begin soon. I mean, they're doing the focus, but I think they need to do all of these first. Where they can actually start invading people in uh, Italy. So, fingers crossed, maybe Italy bites off more than they can chew and gets completely murdered by, let's say, Austria or by uh, Two Sicilies. Something like that, or at least weakening them significantly. Would be nice. I mean, Germany, how many men do you guys have? 106. The French, probably, if I take a guess, are about the same. And Ching has declared war and has won against the Hunan clique. So you're doing pretty, pretty well. I mean, Ching is actually doing surprisingly well in a lot of uh, recent campaigns of ours. Uh, which is nice for them. And there we go. We've land grants to returnees. After that, let's go for National Economic Assistance Commission, which is going to give us more construction speed and a little bit more stability. Having 82% stability is really nice. Remember like two episodes ago where we had like negative 12? We're in a much better situation now. Aside from that, we do want... I'm actually going to wait five more days to buy more uh, construction materials. Let me just look at the wall. You are now building up the final territory here. Of course, after that, we want to just build up as many military factions as we possibly can in Riga. Because we need to get this ball rolling. There we go. Buy construction materials. After that, we will buy more rifles. That's all pretty good. Um, actually, we, yeah, I think we can get started on this now. Yes. So, fantastic. So, you now have, you have level 1, but you will be level 3 soon. So, our defenses are pretty good. Change the war on the Guangxi military government. We know they're much luckier than we are with, when, in our campaign where uh, we are at war with, like, 15 different people at the same time. Now, the AI Ching has been having a uh, an easier time with things, let's just say. I think what we want to do... Wait, now you're way too expensive. Let's go for production efficiency cap being increased, because we're almost near our cap for our rifles and artillery right now anyways. Cuba joined the Rice Pact, really, I don't think it's going to be making a big difference. And I think we're going to go for one more... Like the artillery stations. What are we missing for that? We need to do all our defenses. Do we have enough artillery? Yes. I don't have enough support equipment, but there's not enough I can, there's nothing I can do about that right now, at least until you are finished. So, I'm going to go for more rifles, because rifles, unsurprisingly, are always pretty useful. Um, I don't know if there's ever a time we have too many rifles for your army. Especially since we want to be make sure that when the war begins, we don't immediately run out of everything. The Bulgarian government's been overthrown, which seems bad. It's led right now by the Social Democrats, as long as maybe they end up doing the Reich's Pact. I mean, government being overthrown doesn't actually seem that bad. Or put the bourgeoisie. Seek new alliances. So I think they can... The Sovereignists have dominated Middle Africa. Is that the uh, Social Conservatives? No, it's uh, Horin Goering, who has now uh, become National Populist. Which basically means, hey, Middle Africa is probably about to collapse very, very, very soon. Um, really change. Actually, it is increasing, which I'm surprised by. But we'll, we'll see kind of how they uh, play with that. Yeah, you're all going to lose stability. So, congrats. Good, good luck with that, Goring. Good, good luck. Because we need to get, we need to get, like, all of these things done. Um. 
Two time bonus industry is not bad. A research slot, kind of like always useful. Germany declared war on Ukraine. Okay, so we're actually about to be at war. Because you have got a national populist, which I think is the. The anti German? Is it like the pro Russian side? I actually don't remember. Germany, I'm going to join your war against Ukraine. And my reasoning for joining your war is so that I can, uh. Well, save our political power and maybe be able to increase our conscription law or something like that. Hey, Donald Cuban Union. I cannot call you because I am a subject, so never mind. I don't like this, mostly because it's going to be a whole, um... It's a, it's a, bu it's a bunch of waste of manpower, uh, which is not great. And Ukraine is actually usually pretty strong. Actually, I guess they have at most three six divisions, which actually is not, uh, not so scary. Right, with any of you in the war. Middle Africa joined the war. But I think White Ruthenia is going to get absolutely demolished by uh, the Ukrainian forces. Which is, uh, lovely. Germany, are you going to send troops down there? I don't think Germany is going to even send troops to deal with Ukraine. Honestly. So, I guess Ukraine, I guess that <laughs> might actually fall to be, uh, you know, a big problem for us. Don Cuban Union has not joined the war here. Yeah, no, this seems actually very bad. So I'm actually going to draw my front line against uh, the guys here. But not like that. No, just here, please. I mean, I'm now a little bit worried. And, and I think for good reason. Um, because Ukraine, if they make their way all the way up here into our borders, that could be a problem. There's no matter, like, White Ruthenia has no chance. Um, Germany seems like they just don't care at all and have no interest in actually, uh, sending men over there. Okay, now Don Kuban Union is being involved. So, see kind of how they play out. They are sending some troops to go take Sevastopol. A smart maneuver, I would say. What, 47? We could get more war support through you. That's 2%. Well, I think the normal one's just 1%. But I think we just want to save 100 political power to go for accepted conscription. The 10% training time really is not a huge deal. 297 days? No, we're going to go for the 1939 rifle. Ukraine's actually having a kind of a difficult time fighting this war. And by that, I mean they're just not doing very well. In the, in the sense that they could be getting this war done much faster. Really, you took over the entirety of Crimea, except for Zvestopol. Can I, can I ask you why you thought that would make sense? Like, of all the territories you could take, you, you take everything except for the victory point? An odd, an odd choice, if I do say so myself. Um, after that, Research People's 5% is pretty good. Rock Technology, I think it's kind of garbage, honestly. Because... Like, aren't rockets basically just bad? I'm pretty sure they're, they're, they're just bad. Yeah, I mean, right now, you are only staying on the side here against Russia, which makes sense. But on the other hand, if you were to... I just don't know how you actually... Protocol of 1919. I think you are different. The newspaper Riga Am Sontag has republished a document from 1919, the so-called Protocol of 1919, to the uproar of many of its readers. Protocol of 1919 is an anti-Semitic text supposedly found in the pocket of a dead Bolshevik soldier during the Russian Civil War. It is a barely coherent fabricated report which gloats over reducing the Russian people to slaves, declares that the revolutionaries in Russia and France were instigated by the so-called International Israeli League. And, and that it should be used to buy up gold and government bonds across the world in order to build power and influence. Published during the Estonian War of Independence, it has since been picked up by anti-Semites uh, and even added to the addendum to later be released the Protocols of the Elder of Zion. The government has immediately stood against the decision by uh, the Riga Am Sontag, however demanding the issue be taken down for propagating fabricated conspiracies, seeking, incite ethnic, uh, seems seeking to ignite ethnic strife. Paul Schiemann's Riga Radio 
Uh, Responding to the publication as well, analyzed protocol in detail and shedding light upon the non political claims stated in there. Thank you for 20 political power. That actually saves me quite a bit of time. We'll see if you guys actually end up taking Minsk or not. Dot, <laughs> just incredible work here. We're at 26,000 to 13,000. Germany, do you think you would want to maybe get involved to protect your puppet states? Just... Just a just a thought, you know. Maybe maybe that's something that you'd want to do. But it seems like they have no real interest in doing that, at least at the moment. Okay, so Lithuania is now getting called into action because the AI has now uh, made a direct border with them. Like we could send troops down there as well, but I'm really more interested in defending my own uh, front line. My allies want to kill themselves. That's up to them. Especially if Russia maybe decides to invade Ukraine and, uh... Would probably be actually the worst case scenario. If Russia takes over all of this territory and then declares one of the Reichs Pact. Yeah, we're gonna need to go up to limited conscription. Thank you very much. Um... Because right now... We want to get all this stuff going. Artillery stations, the anti-air defenses. We have... A hundred support equipment. We need three hundred. Which is more than I have. You know what? Get it on the once release building some support equipment naturally. Rissing aluminum, rissing tungsten. I cannot afford. I know we're not. I know there's no template for it. Don't worry about that. I know we cannot afford to. We can't afford to import this material. Because it's not really that necessary. Argentina is doing the right pact. Okay. Chile is still syndicalist. You don't have any more puppets at the moment. You're all still fighting each other. I mean, Ukraine's looking pretty weak. You know what? Actually, what can I do? Can I, like, ask control of Crimea? You re has refused. Okay, that makes sense. I was just hoping if maybe they would give me... Ruthenia's capitulated. That seems horrible. That seems really, really bad for you. Uh, Lithuania. And also, very bad for me, because I'm on the border of Lithuania. Please, let's go for... Efficiency base plus 5% is not bad. Factory output plus 5% and the cap going up by 5% are also pretty good for us. I just want to stay behind my defensive walls. Actually, you know what I could also do as soon as these factories are all done? If you just want to build a level 1 wall across our southern border, just in case Russia does any weird sh shenanigans. Okay. Disorder in the Revel Rieterschlut. A small scandal has broken out in the Revel Rieterschlut, an education institution dedicated to tutoring the children of the Baltic nobility. The school manager has chosen to hire a substitute teacher to fill out the vacancies in their increasingly aging administration, but soon came to regret their mistake. Said teacher, Alfred Rosenberg, a Baltic German native of Revel, was hired to teach history in this prestigious institution, but it turned out his curriculum was an incomprehensible mess of Aryan racial theories. Venement anti-Semitism and rants about degenerate modern art. The most egregious of the fence, however, was the fact that her Rosenberg fabricated proof of his noble status, which is mandatory for all teachers in the school. This was because of him. This was the cause of him to be expelled and fined 250 Baltic marks for Herod Rosenberg. This was an amount of money difficult to pay. A teacher of several years of experience in various gymna uh, gymnasiums, he never really got into a position where he could earn that much money. But he eventually scourged up to the fine and probably decided to emigrate to Germany. The story I had has earned a little bit of notoriety in the Baltic press, mostly as an interesting example of relationship between the Baltic knighthoods and the German, the Baltic German commoners. Abandoned Commune. Through the, following the Rural Communes Act, after the abolition of serfdom in the Baltic provinces, Lavig and Estonian peasantry began to organize into rural communes. The Langamsgd. Which were granted autonomy, democratic self-government, and certain powers, as well as privileges. Here, the generation of peasants have grown up in largely autonomous and democratic conditions, able to foster their native cultures and participate in the process of government. Sometimes, however, these rights can go too far. In the Adamund Parish, also known as to the Latvians as Skulti, the local Lemshades has elected Beatrice Beardis to be his new elder. Beatrice, an inhabitant of the parish who moved to Riga to work in the old dockyard had, and joined his trade union movement, is a self-proclaimed syndicalist. It was elected to, by the commune with a platform of implemented syndicalism for the people. While the idea of syndicalism could be implemented in such a small collective of Jews would frustrate the left-wing ideologue, this does not uh, affect the local po locals one bit. It was a vow to build a classless society without exploitation in the heart of the United Baltic Duchy. 
This commune has gained the mass explosion in the Baltic press, and while it, it is in the right of Lanchmain to elect the government which the inhabitants want, the Baltic Lanchmain calls for military intervention to remove the syndicalist local government. The commune will not go down without a fight, however, much like the other Lanchmain. It keeps a small militia to defend its border, and seems ready to defend its syndicalist goals. We can either destroy them, which is a little bit of construct, uh, destruction, or we lose stability. Well, the beating heart of syndicalism will be destroyed. Seeing as in about a year from now, we're going to go to war with the Internationale. It really just seems like a logical goal for us. So Lithuania, how are you guys doing, by the way? You doing well? Do not, do not go here. Stay, stay in this territory, please. Don't get it. Don't do not get involved in the Ukrainian war. It's only will cause us pain and suffering. Uh, for right now, though, I do need more construction material, and I'll also build these artillery stations. Thank you very much. So that should get us level 4 force across most of the border, which is a negative 60% attack penalty, which I think is really good. The Irish are now showing up. So Ireland has decided to send troops to Ukraine before the Germans did. So it really seems, you know, what use of our overlord at all. And you guys should be getting uh, the manpower, right? Probably slowly. Got to 10%, modify to 40, so we're going to cap at 4%. Which is still not great, uh, let's admit. You guys are having some difficulties. I mean, Germany, I guess, has sent troops down towards the south, which is a bit of us. Okay, so they've actually navally invaded down in Odessa. So thank you, Germany, for actually providing some uh, assistance here. So hopefully, maybe Germany will get more stuff done. And if I can go through this entire war without taking any casualties... Thumbs up! Fantastic. Uh, we'll get for more rifles then. Thank you very much. And now the Italians are at war with each other, which is... Uh, bad. But that's okay. Germany, I've noticed that you've taken all your troops out. Why would you let Navy invade and then just take all your units out of Ukraine? I would like an explanation on my desk tomorrow at the earliest. Thank you. Yeah, so you guys are taking over some territory. Because I guess Germany decided to send troops down to here instead? Sure, why not? How many troops do you guys even have? 10 to 45. Well, you slowly try to build up more and more units. Let's export. Actually, we also need to do you. But I also need to get all this stuff done because you're actually really good. You know what? I want to get this done so we can actually get those really two uh, good upgrades for our army. Okay, because you should be destroyed. How much, do you, how much do you want to bet that these guys right here are for a naval invasion to go straight back to Odessa? No, they're actually going to naval invade here, which is a much worse choice. Sometimes I just don't understand what the AI is trying to do. I would probably go so far as to say that the AI has no idea what the AI wants to do either, so I guess we're all in the same boat there. I will buy some anti-air guns uh, at, at, for the time being, though, as well. You guys are at least making some progress. 123,000 to 47k. All pretty bad. And I do think all these guys... Are you surrounded? I think so. So fantastic work there. I'm, I'm proud of each and every one of you. Yes, yeah, because your war is now over. Will you defend the Italian Federation? You have military access. You have a non-aggression pact. But no actual defensive measures are in place. The Zili clique has formed with the UN and Qing. Okay. Seems reasonable enough. For a one year. <sighs> I mean, for one days. I'm, I'm actually going to do it. 1941 tech. Just a little bit into. I guess at that point, 1940. Seems good for us. Argent Argentina has sent more men now to this front line than the Germans have. Like, Germany could have ended this war. An eon ago. Okay, so they've actually sent more men over here, including some tanks. Really, if you just went straight to Kiev and, like, uh, Pavlograd, 
the war would probably already be over. Assuming, of course, Germany does not just immediately take all their troops out of the territory, which they might do. Why would they? I don't know. But it just seems to be a thing that they've kind of been uh, interested in uh, kind of perpetuating. So next we're going to go for, again, attack and defense, training time, uh, research speed. All that seems really good, so I will take it. So all of Germany's allies are helping to fight against Ukraine. I mean, yeah, I guess there are German troops down here, but still, like, they've shown up substantially later than you would have uh, expected. I mean, I, I, like, Ukraine's not going to win the war, but this really, really, really puts a hamper on uh, our main goals. Also, Trace of Estopol is only worth, worth 15. Kind of expected it actually to be worth a little bit more than that. In Germany, if you want to send more troops over here, that's kind of what I would recommend at least. You're about to be killed. I mean, maybe Ukraine doesn't have enough troops to actually maintain all the fronts. I don't know if DJ has joined the Entente. Okay, so you're in the Entente. Natal. Yeah, because you guys actually have focus trees now. Which is interesting. You guys might end up fighting in the third Boer War. Natal is joined the Entente. Because you have gone... You're claiming war on all these guys. You're actually going to be at war with the Entente soon. And the start of the Third Boer War. Yeah, because I guess the, the Dutch have uh, taken some territory there. I guess the Afrikaners. And White Rutsenia has not uncapitulated itself quite yet, but they should get there soon. Once, um... I guess probably once they take this city back, then they'll get that done. So the advanced machine tool is having just finished. 102 days. We'll go for the construction speed. It's really not too, too bad for us. As we want more guns, the answer is probably. We do have 5,000, which is pretty good. We don't have the manpower, though, to build more units, which kind of... Uh, I really wish I would, because I, I wish I could get my way up to uh, 15 divisions. That'd be really nice for us. But for right now, I think this is going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thanks everybody for watching. My name is Anthony. If you've enjoyed, one thumbs up. If not, join me, thumbs down. Honestly, subscribe and goodbye.